Great. So thanks for coming today. Um, I'm excited to talk about building relationships on LinkedIn. I really focus this on more of a like referral partners, but it could be potential new clients possibly. This is a much bigger talk. I wish I had more time, but I'm gonna give you the, the, the you know, uh, cliff notes of what I, what I teach on this. And so one of the things I really wanna stress is um, I have this ring method and I started getting on LinkedIn probably like 2019. Uh, a business coach was telling me you're missing out if you're not on there and I'm like it's just a just everyone's resume right she's like no it's much more than that you gotta get on there and connect with people and then she lectured me about connecting with people that I didn't know because up to that point I only connect with people I knew and that li really limited me because I'm here in Portland Oregon that's a very small sample of you know, pre-pandemic I wasn't meeting any any folks like you across the country and um, she's like no you need to meet people you don't know you need to get out there and and you know start connecting with new folks so I give you some tips on how to do that today and just some insight I've seen on LinkedIn over the last couple of years and it's definitely changed with the pandemic quite a bit but there's some things that are, have stayed the same and um, it's definitely one of my favorite platforms so my my um, framework is ring and it's R reshape your profile I invite referral partners with your posts N name who matters in your top 50 and G greet and be authentic in direct messages and before I get further I just want to say that I do marketing strategy and coaching with a lot of um, solopreneurs and folks that are mostly coast coaches and consultants and they are mostly on LinkedIn so this is something that we talk about a lot and definitely have coached a lot of people through this so reshape your profile. One of the first things that um, many of you probably realize, and I've realized this too, is like when you meet somebody on LinkedIn, there's a photo, and well, hopefully there's a photo. If you if you don't have a photo, I I run, don't walk, and put a photo up there, even if it's something that's not exactly you know amazing, something that looks good, because what. I find is if you don't have a photo, it definitely is like, hey, why are you hiding? What's going on? And also have it be fairly recent in the, within the last five years. There's so many people I've, I've met on LinkedIn. Then I get on, on a, a Zoom call or I've met them in person. I'm like, whoa, that, <laughs> that is not you. I don't know which photo you put up there, but that does not match who I thought you were. So it's good to really look like yourself, especially if you had a haircut or some, some big dramatic change you know don't hide yourself people want to know what you look like because you know it ha you want to build trust and this is a great platform to do that but if you aren't looking like you think you are and it's misleading then people are just going to be like very confused um, another thing to play with is um, your title now i'm going to actually hop off this for a second and go over to my own linkedin profile and kind of walk you through this because it's more fun um, I've been playing around with my title for a long time, and it's something you can even change on a weekly basis, um, kind of see how people react and play with it. And there's different philosophies. I think it's good to really state what you do and how, who you help. Um, there's definitely a lot of other folks out there that I'd like to play around and um, have it be more Instagram style, like I'm a big Star Wars fan, or I love this, or I love that. You know, it depends on who your clients are and it depends on who you want to attract for referral partners. If it's, you know, if it's very professional, then probably, you know, the, the tea, tea drinking or, um, you know, the, the, the little nuances aren't as important as who you serve and how you help them and what their outcome is. So I think it's really important to play around with that title a bit. And then also the about section, let me get to that here, um, is really valuable. Um, let me open it up. It's this whole landscape of, of space that you, it's like, you know, 20, 2,600 characters that you can have a lot of fun with and really put information in there. And you can't put links, but you can put like, you know, describing who you help, what their outcomes are, you know, um, benefits of working with you, and then how to contact you, like what, what different ways. And you can, you can at least put some emojis in there to kind of stand out a little bit, but you can see my example. And then it's also, you can find to just add some more client uh, testimonials too. So, you know, don't skimp on your about section. It's one of those kind of secret spots of LinkedIn that can really be valuable and help people see and validate who you are. And, you know, you can even copy some of the stuff from your website and put it on here and just kind of tweak it and make it more bite sized and bullet points. But I just want to stress how important it is to take advantage of that section. All right, let's hop back in here. Of course, it takes a minute to load. Okay. All right. So let's get into invite referral partners. So this is this is interesting because, um, you know, we all post on LinkedIn or some of us do more than others. And, you know, it's really good to think about what kind of post you want to put out there. I did this. I've been experimenting, especially over the pandemic, because we're not seeing a whole lot of each other and just asking really 
interesting questions or just sharing very vulnerable things about myself. And I shared this one post um, back in like February of 2021, so a little over a year ago. And I talked about how scared I was uh, to teach this one class that my mentor Jackie asked me to teach about five or six years ago and how you know, she was like, hey, I'd really like you to teach this three hour class. And up to that point, I had never taught a class or got in front of people longer than 20 minutes. So that that was pretty scary. And so I talked about it in this post and I shared how I practiced and practiced and practiced and I practiced from my dog and I just got, you know, over time, I just kind of got more comfortable with it. But it was definitely a real uncomfortable part of 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 teaching and, and kind of easing into this transition of what it's like to be uh, instructor. And, you know, I put it out there and I put, I'll, I'll give you another example too. And what was interesting is, you know, I, it was scary, but I, I was a little bit more vulnerable and I was approachable. And what happens, people started contacting me. And actually this one gentleman, Roger, contacted me, put me in touch with these amazing coaches who now I work with closely. Uh, they're my, one of my best clients and they're helping me get more and more work. So it's, it's really interesting. And you think it's kind of reverse psychology, but it's really interesting to put yourself out there a little bit more so you can be more human because you know you're seeing a lot of posts out there on linkedin that are very salesy or just kind of like i can't relate with that but the more you can you know be a little bit more vulnerable and put yourself out there i think you can attract people that um have very shared values and are like-minded and another another post i did was really funny um i i asked people this was like gosh probably like january of 2021 so right in the middle of the pandemic i asked them if you could add a, a room to your house, what kind of room would you add? And oh my God, the answers were so fascinating and people got really into it. I got, I don't know, 24 comments and I just asked a simple question, but you know, it was something that really hit home. There were some people that were like, I want to add a library. And some people were like, I want to add a music room. And then, and then this other, this other whole like conversation piece of people going into like craft rooms, I want to make this and that. And then they start connecting and talking to each other. And I had just instigated it. So I feel like, um, you know, I definitely got some good conversations from that and connected with some people. And some of those people have, got, have come on to be like great referral partners. Uh, they've been part of masterminds, been good friends. So I think it's, you know, it's kind of fascinating to ask questions and be a little vulnerable on LinkedIn. Um, and then, you know, really focus. Don't just hop on there and scroll. That's like the worst thing you can do. It's like, I like to say it's like, you know, opening that bag of potato chips and going, I'm just going to have a few potato chips. And then all of a sudden the half the bag's eaten and you feel gross and you're like, wait, what just happened? That's kind of how it is to scroll on LinkedIn. And they know that they're, you know, that's what all these social media platforms know. They, it's like, you know, playing lottery or playing gam a gambling machine. It's like, yeah, more and more. And then all of a sudden you feel like you just ate a bunch of junk food. It's kind of this really gross feeling. So I implore you invite you to do something different where you make a list of people you really want to stay in touch with like referral partners potential clients past clients and then you maybe make an excel spreadsheet and you focus on engaging with those people and leaving comments maybe you know we'll get into dming in a minute but you know really don't just you know be at the mercy of the algorithms or the you know whatever's popping up on your feed do not do not use the feed you know have a different strategy and um i guarantee you it will move the dial especially if you start connecting with people, like let's say there's somebody that's could be a really good referral partner and they are not getting a lot of traction on any of their posts and you start commenting and, and start engaging with them, they're gonna notice and remember that. And they may not react act to it quite quickly, but over time it does make an impression and um, it's nice to be that, that ally for them. I see there's a few, let's see. Okay, good, all right. So yeah, let's get into, into like the um, conversation piece. This is a little tricky, right? Because how many of us raise our hands? How many of us get like spammed in our, our direct messages and LinkedIn, right? Like me daily, it's every day. And it's always the same stuff where it's like, oh, hey, do you wanna um, meet with me? I have something to, I saw, I'm gonna improve your, of course, right? You guys all do, a lot of you guys do SEO, but I get hit up with the SEO every single day, every day. Like you want no more SEO, I'm like, no. I don't know you. Why are you asking me to meet with you? Stop it. And so I just want to implore you that it's really great to, if you are going to use like the um, LinkedIn messaging, it's so good to be human. <laughs> so if you start being human, you stand out and it's a different experience. And, you know, a lot of times I have these canned messages I used and I um, will tweak them a little bit and make them personal and customize them. And then, you know, just basically saying, hey, it's so great to connect with you. Have a great week or thanks for checking out my profile. Um, 
I can't wait to see what you share. You know, it's, and then, you know, I sometimes will even look at their profile and, and say, oh, you went to so-and-so's college. That's awesome. What did you learn? You know, it's, it's so important to be human and be friendly and kind. And actually I created a whole LinkedIn masterclass about how to, how to, you know, with kindness. Thank you. With kindness, you can actually connect with LinkedIn and, and meet people and, and really start having some great referral partners. So, um, it's, it's really to your advantage to stand out and not have like those copy and paste messages uh, everyone else is doing. And I know most, I know, I think all of you don't do that, but I just want to help you kind of stand out a little bit more. And, you know, track this stuff. It's like I said, having an Excel uh, spreadsheet or a CRM, I use this one called Less Annoying, is really helpful to help keeping all this, um, you know, see if it's moving the dial, see if things are happening and, you know, also keeping track of who you are connecting with. And if it's, if they're, if they're noticing, if they're responding back, you know, could be they sign up for your newsletter on your website. There's all kinds of interesting ways that by you commenting and engaging with people that they will respond. And then also um, just in referral part partners in general, I think, you know, keep I, the quarterly, it's good to, once you start really building this relationship to, you know, have some kind of touch point, you know, have a phone call, um, you know, depending on if they like to connect with you on direct messaging, maybe, you know, I can send a fun audio message or video. It's better if you know someone, if you start, I've done some experiments. If you don't know someone, you start sending them audio and video messages, it doesn't always go so well. So it's really important to have that established relationship. And even like a handwritten card, I've actually gotten a lot of traction doing that over the last couple of years because we're just not seeing each other and have something physical in your hand to share is really powerful. Um, and then, you know, I have this whole thing about gifting, you know, if you really want to, you know, have a connection with a referral partner, you want to reward them if they give you referrals. And um, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, I have a lot of stories to share, which I'm running out of time. But, you know, for example, it's always good to have sent someone something custom, like my family made me this this water bottle has pictures of us having fun and I look at it daily and I use it and it's really a powerful message of how much they care about me. And so you could do something like that where, for example, um, I sent a cutting board in the shape of Washington to my one accountability friend partner and um, put her family name on it, sent it to her. She loved it. She lives in, she loves, she lives in her Seattle. She really is passionate about living in Washington and she likes to cook. So every time she cuts those carrots, she's going to think of me on that cutting board. And that's pretty powerful. So it's really good to have um, something that's really thoughtful that you can give to someone um, versus just like some tchotchke that they're just going to be like, oh, great. Another, another mug. Oh, great. What do I do with this? You know, really put some thought into it. And then um, there's this one thing I'll just recommend called Tis Best. I have a lot of uh, clients and referral partners that are love to give back and volunteer. And it's a gift card that lets you basically um, put some money on it, any amount, and then they can pick whatever charity or nonprofit they want to give to. So there's all kinds of ways. So, you know, as you have these conversations, you know, you use LinkedIn to start meeting people, but then you have these one-on-ones, you know, usually like on Zoom or the phone or in person, get to know those people. So you can send them something that really is going to impact them and um, help them help them be sure that you you appreciate them. Got about a minute and a half left. Um, so there's this really great book called Giftology called by John by John Roland, and he has all these different philosophies about gifting. And some of the big ones that I'd like to share with you are, you know, it's not, don't you don't want to give alcohol because that one's can be, you know, you don't know how it's going to land. So maybe somebody's in recovery or they just don't even like it. Uh, no food because it disappears and then there's no trace of it. Um, plants are kind of iffy because somebody could easily <clears throat> kill them. But, you know, having these things that are reusable, having like you know, water bottles and cutting boards and, you know, things you can engrave things on, you know, like uh, bags, things that people can use. Like um, actually Michelle on the call, on the meetup here, um, I gave, I gifted her, her partner, Cindy, uh, a travel kit and something, some little treat with for her dog because she referred a client to me. And I think it landed pretty well. And Michelle actually helped me figure out what gifts to give Cindy. So I, I thank you. So it really does make a difference. And I think it's good to show appreciation to your um, referral partners. Great. Um, thank you very much. Um, we're doing something new and I, I put it in my newsletter. Uh, I'm going to launch a poll because I think uh, Nedra would appreciate feedback. Four questions. Uh, the first couple are rate one to five. 
Uh, and the last one is, um, and, and these are anonymous uh, as far as I know. <laughs> I think it's anonymous. Um, but uh, if you would all just uh, provide some feedback, um, that would be great. And uh, yeah, so far it's anonymous. Uh, and I will not share anybody's information, but be as honest as you can. Um, and then um, at the bottom, there's an opportunity for you to add some uh, written feedback. Does everybody see the poll? Yeah. yeah. Didn't see the opportunity that... to add feedback. That's okay. It should yeah. be on the fourth question. Maybe it's the second page. I only saw two questions. Only two questions. Only two questions. All right. All right. I see that. I don't know. Something's wrong with it. I'll fix it next and time. And I can't Thank answer you. number two. No one can answer number two until the end. So are we supposed to keep this up until the end? No, you're supposed to have positive. Yeah, the quality of the uh, you know what? This is this is the wrong um, <laughs> the wrong survey. Michael, this is an you old don't one. make mistakes. This is an old one. Um, okay, we'll just do this one today and I'll fix it next time. Uh, I'll I'll close it out. I won't close it out, but um, you can uh, you can wait till the end of the networking. And then we'll I'll try to find the right poll. Um, Okay, uh, so we have, geez, we have a good full house today. That's three by five, that's 15 people. Um, so Scott, you said you have to leave, right? Uh, I do, I have a, a, um, a telehealth appointment at six and I wanna have at least a minute, a few minutes before that to uh, prepare for that. All right, so uh, why don't you just go first? That'll, that'll give you plenty of time. Um, I think let's do about two minutes um, and I will uh, fix the problem with the, uh, the polling. Um, you want me to go but, first? Yeah, why don't you go first? We'll do two minutes. Uh, I'm going to put you in speaker mode because when I record, um, you know, I get the full, I get the full screen. So if everybody else would go on mute, that would be great. And that way you don't show up on the, on the speaker mode. You're up, Scott. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and I hope everybody's uh, feeling well. Um, I, I think nearly everybody with perhaps uh, some of our new guests are familiar with the fact that I um, focus mostly on uh, brand alliances uh, or alliances and partnerships that um, are focused on uh, generating growth for brands. But today I thought I'd do something a little, well, I'll, I'll stay on in a moment. Um, so for example, um, I recently brought JP Morgan Chase in for a grant. I've done projects with UPS for the Black Entrepreneur Initiative. I'm working now with two, uh, I can't name them. Uh, the ink is not dry, governing bodies for the USOC for sponsorship. So, you know, in the old day, I guess you'd call me a sponsorship marketer, but it gets a little more sophisticated than that sometimes than uh, in these partnerships and alliances that could involve licensing, intellectual property rights. And uh, I was working uh, uh, with um, Sarita and I are talking about, uh, I'm working with a company in Italy, the CEO of an Italian pharmaceutical company to bring a few brands into the United States. And I set up their corporation here and do all of that stuff. And I'm working with partners, even in working with Lang Marketing to partner with me to service these companies. But I thought I'd take a minute and just mention to everybody that one of my um, uh, endeavors is working with the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce and everybody goes, ooh, Chamber of Commerce and everything else. But if anybody is doing business in the greater metropolitan area, this is my pitch, uh, it really does make sense to talk to me about the Greater Metropolitan, about the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. We do networking events like this uh, three times a week, uh, we connect the dots between people who want to do business together. We've been working a lot with the Ukraine and Ukrainian business people. And what's that mean? That um, means time's up. Okay. <laughs> so uh, allow me to just say we have a database of over 30,000 businesses and civic leaders, if that's of interest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and by the way, we have two guests today, Ray for Weigel um, and Rob Cheek. So welcome. And a new member, Michelle Tresmer, who's here for the first time. Um, and okay, so I put in the 
Yes, you are up, um, Rochelle. I put in the, um, the chat the order in which people will go. So Rochelle, take it away. Hey, Rochelle from Dynamic Business Growth. And I always say it's dynamic business growth and not schlep along business growth. Uh, companies are really, they're tortured by how to speak about their business in a compelling way. They are always trying to put a size 10 foot worth of information into a size six shoe. Or they're very common, long-winded and boring. So believe it or not, finally, finally, at the end of May, my program, the ult the unforgettable pitch is going to be ready. So I'm looking for about 10 people for this inaugural program. It's going to be a group program for six weeks. So if you are interested in, you know, spiffing up the way you speak about your business, just, you know, send me an email with the word pitch in the subject matter. I'd love to talk to you to see if it would be a good fit for you. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about today. Okay, you still have a minute left, Rochelle. When you want to put your email in there, um, I mean, you could find Rochelle under Dynamic Business Growth on the net. I'll put the, it in uh, the minute. But again, uh, it's going. Uh, I guarantee that this is going to be a, a working with you program. It's not a do it yourself. It's a do it with you. So if you feel that you need some support in literally. Um, highlighting your expertise so that people can see you as the clear choice. I think this could be a great um, option for you. So I'm going to put my email in the chat. And if anybody reaches out to me, just put the word pitch and I will reconnect. And uh, that's it. You can, I'm, I don't think I have any more time left. And if I do, somebody else can get my five seconds. It's 18, but okay. Wonderful. <laughs> um, Mark, Harry, you are up. Take yourself off mute. Mark, you're still with us, right? Nedra, I just want to say you did a great job. And as one might, one might say, one man's junk is another person's treasure. So when you started talking about uh, getting hit up for SEO all the time, I kind of thought, well, send those leads to me. <laughs> I, I look at uh, anybody who's in the digital marketing space and SEO. Uh, space as a potential prospect for a, a way to introduce you to somebody that you know who's a digital marketer because I have been doing white label SEO for SEO companies for the last 14, 15 years. I've been a business owner at SEO Game uh, for 26, since 1996. And um, just running a company uh, like everyone else here and uh, one, one of the things that really excites me is uh, meeting with people one-to-one. -one. Uh, this group is fantastic. So if you're sitting on the fence and you're looking to make uh, quality uh, your friends and partners and networking, uh, you could find me, for instance, if you go to the TRN, press the referral network.net, and you could uh, just search, search in SEO. And I think I come somewhere near the top. And as an SEO white label provider, I do lots of fun things, but mainly I just would like to get to know you. Anyway, Mark Harry with SEO. Thank you, Mark. And Mark is in Utah, correct? That is correct. All right, but not in Salt Lake City. Now BYU, okay. Um, Mark, another Mark, Mark Iorio. Hey, Dying. thanks, Michael. I um I have the best job in on on the planet. I love what I do. I have a business that uh, helps organizations align their people with their purpose, and it's a um, it's a scientific sort of methodology where we ask people to imagine their entire team as though it, it were a single person doing its best work on its best day to deliver all of its promises and achieve all of its goals. What does that look like? And um, it's a, an exercise that we put people through, they, they answer it online. And uh, by and large, what ends up happening is when we finally get everyone to sing from the same sheet of music or row in the same direction, we end up getting the culture inside the organization to row toward their, their company or Team North Star. Um, it does a lot for the organization, including breaking down those crazy silos that you see passive aggressive behavior and uh, you know the, the uh, a lack of collaboration in organizations it does a hell of a job with that and 
we see a lot of profitability changes and uh, productivity changes. We've done about 11,500 of these over the last uh, 10 years. And uh, doesn't matter what size company or what size industry or what industry, uh, we're kind of agnostic in terms of that. But um, I absolutely love what, what the heck I do every day because it's, you see, you get to see people and organizations become better versions of themselves, you know, marching toward a, you know, that collective North star or the role target that we identify collectively. So anyway, it's called BCAT partners. Um, and I'll stick my um, contact information in the chat. I also have two television programs that I host uh, on RVN television in um, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Rajiv's going to be on one of the programs pretty soon, I think. Right, buddy? <laughs> so thanks, Michael. I'm, uh, I'm finished. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. And the 11,000, that's, that's not 11,000 companies. It's 11,000 individual surveys. 11,000 people, about uh, 300 and 20, 320 companies. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Rafer, um, who I met today uh, and just did a five hour drive from St. Louis to Chicago. You can get a picture. Feel free, give your pitch. Okay, thanks, Michael. Yeah, yesterday, Las Vegas, this morning, St. Louis, now uh, an Airbnb in Chicago. So, um, Nedra, first of all, uh, very much enjoyed your presentation. I'm a big proponent of LinkedIn as a lead generator. Uh, it's very much a part of my um, of my uh, of my business. I'm a content creator. I'm a recovering journalist. Um, you talked about Mark about loving what you do. When I was in journalism, I hated what I did. I hated standing in front of dead bodies under sheets, and God forbid it effing snowed. Um, you know, the doofus reporter in the snow. Hi, it's snowing back to you. Um, so now I do content creation, and I and I you know, uh, sadly the word storyteller has become cliche. I don't like using that word, but at the same time, that is the differentiator in terms of what we, what I do. Uh, my team, rather. We are a team of former journalists, also artistic uh, shooters, and we really specialize in videography, but we also do uh, blogs for SEO. Um, I always say nobody's actually going to read that blog, but it's going to help them find your video through a Google search. And the, two, and the content creation is key. And one of the reasons why I was interested in being a part of this group is that you know, for you guys who are in marketers and SEO, I really like to stay in my lane. I love interviewing people. I love finding out what your story is about, what's special about you. I love coaching you up to convey that story with passion. And then I like editing you and putting you in, in, in really impactful sound bites that are going to yield a call to action. And then I like partnering with people like yourself. I'll make the tree fall in the forest. You guys let it make, make it uh, make a sound as it were. Um, when it comes to our differentiator in the videography space, like I said, we're very story driven. We focus on the four Ps. I don't believe in one and done videos. We've tried to create a model that is middle class, middle of the road as far as a price point that's not over the top. But from that one shoot, I want to get you at least eight videos. So you have enough content for two to three months to get those key messages um, because the messaging is everything. We follow the story smart, the smart acronym. What is the editorial strategy? What are the message to find your audience, make you relatable on camera and tell your story in your own words. Two minutes is up. That's Miami playoff music. Thank you very much, Michael. It is. Is that what that is? You gave me that. That meant it was done. Uh, right? I was talking oh, that was, yeah. Oh, the, the okay. um, yeah. Okay. Uh, but the, I don't know what the bell is. You said it was a Miami playoff music. Okay. No, no, um, the, the Emmy playoff music. It's a joke. It's okay. an industry joke. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you for, for bringing me in on it. Um, and thank you for joining after a five hour drive uh, from Chicago. David Libby, all the way from Orinda. In California, for those of you that don't know where Orinda is, <laughs> thanks so much, Nedra, for that presentation. I learn something from Nedra every time she posts on LinkedIn or I get an email from her. She has a fantastic email list. I suggest you all sign up for it. She's a wealth of knowledge about how, how to market your business, and I could go on for two months about her. So thank you for your time. Uh, so I am David Libby, and I work with Two Pins. We're a marketing agency. We accelerate startups to their exits. What does that mean? Nothing to any one of you. Um, basically, I would do PR. I do PR for B2B tech startups. So if we had a client in Montana that was the number two player to salesforce.com. You probably all heard of salesforce.com. He said, what do we do to accelerate to our exit? 
We said, well, Salesforce is about to IPO. You should IPO too. He said, what? We said, do it. And he IPO'd and he became one of the top five IPOs in that year down from Salesforce just because of a little bit of push on the marketing. You know, a little bit of like, hey, you know what? We are we don't own the market like Salesforce did, but we had a percentage of it. And I'll tell you something. He later sold his company to Oracle for a billion dollars. So marketing works when you work it. And uh, we'll happy to help anyone if your clients get to their exit or to their launch or to help them do their fundraising round uh, through getting more attention through PR content and social. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. Good to see you all. Here you and go. Can you share the name of that company? Right now, Technologies. Uh, Greg Gianforte, who some of you may know, uh, became the governor of Montana. He was the one who punched the reporter. You might remember that. Yeah, <laughs> he was fun to work with. He was talking about, yeah, I got a lot of good stories about Greg. So, gubernatorial material. Yes, he was, he was. Yeah. And that's why he wanted to be. And I think he later became a congressman or a house or representative, one of the two. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, Nedra was next in the list, but of course, Nedra gave a presentation. Uh, although, uh, Nedra, why don't you tell, uh, we do have time. Do you want to just tell about yourself? Because you really yeah. get a chance to do that. Yeah, I can, I can briefly share. Um, yeah. So, like I said earlier, I do marketing strategy and coaching, and one of the best ways to I'll tell a story that it's always a good way to show. Um, I okay, so I met those coaching folks through I mentioned the gentleman um, Roger on LinkedIn, and so um, they were basically uh, like they're doing health and wellness and HR type of coaching, but they weren't saying that. And they were on all the platforms. They were on LinkedIn, they were on Facebook, they're on Instagram, and they're just spreading themselves so thin and trying to just maintain their own marketing. And so we met in December and I sat down and I'm like, what do you, you know, I'm like you guys are, you have such mi mixed messages. What are you really saying? What are you, who, you know, tell me a case study of someone you successfully helped. Just let me know what's going on here. And they broke it down. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, okay. And this is happens all the time. Like, stop, you know, stop doing Facebook, stop doing Instagram. Let's take, let's stay on LinkedIn and start. You actually really love writing. Okay, let's start doing some email newsletters and um, start, you know, getting yourself out there, doing a little bit of presentation, speaking, um, get get into your networks, you know, because my pillars of teaching are and what I help people with are email marketing, speaking, and um, referral partners, and then just educating and networking. And so they did a combination of that. And now they hired a virtual assistant and they're closing deals left and right because they finally have time and they're not wasting it on these other platforms. So that that's in a nutshell um, who I help and, and how I can uh, make a difference. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your, your presentation and uh, uh, the two minutes definitely helps people understand more about what you do. Um, so next up, uh, Andy Brennitz. Hey everybody, Nedra, thank you for your insights on LinkedIn. I've been a long time user of LinkedIn. I'm uh, kind of connected to almost anybody who wants to connect with me. Go ahead, spam away. You can always ignore those messages and just not, not reply. Uh, so I'm Andy, owner and uh, chief creative strategist of Brennitz Creative, an integrated branding, marketing and creative strategy firm based out in Phoenix, Arizona. I used to be from Long Island, but you can't shovel too much sunshine out here and I never wanna see snow ever again. Um, I'm based in Phoenix, Arizona, like I said, but I have clients all over the country. Uh, we help growing businesses and individuals working mostly by themselves to compete with big brands by developing and maintaining a consistent way to look, communicate and act. Uh, entrepreneurs are great at what they do. All of you, me, our clients, we're awesome, right? But most entrepreneurs are not really good at what we do, which is branding and marketing strategy. And that's specifically what I do. So when clients give me an hour, I give them a ton of ideas that they can use to grow their business. When they give me two, I deliver a whole brand strategy and roadmap that will position their business to attract clients like a moth to a flame. So a great referral for me, would be an owner of a one to five person uh, professional services based business who wants to get off the feast or famine roller coaster of clients and profits. So again, I'm Andy from Brennan's Creative. Design without strategy is just art. And I say that as a graphic designer. Love the lava lamp. Like it? 
yeah. it still works. I can't it's really tell works. it's going. Oh, yeah, you can see. Yeah. I can see it moving around there. Um, thank you. And Andy, is this your first meeting or second? First, first one. Welcome. Yeah, I know. What, what's uh, the saying? Long time listener, first time caller. There you go. There you go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're on. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Okay, let's see. That was Andy Rob Cheeks, who was a guest. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Michael, I want to thank you for inviting me in. And um, so my name is Rob Cheeks. I have a consulting company, but what I do is also coach startups and entrepreneurs, give them a roadmap, strategy, and then provide the resources for them from graphic designers, web developers, everything that they're going to need down the road to be successful. On the other side, I'm a consultant for business and brands. And what I do really is teach them how to pivot in digital transformation. And more or less, I specialize in proximity marketing. Proximity marketing will go from QR codes on the low end to geofencing, geotargeting, to uh, digital billboards on the highway. So what it is, is to make you viral, be insane to everyone from connected television, as far as like Hulu, uh, Pluto, uh, uh, any of the streaming platforms that I can get your commercials on there as well. So the goal is to be in front of the, the people and become the authority in the space. So as long as you're seen there and you're viral in their space, then they'll take your business seriously and then really look at what you have to offer. And, and Rob, you're based in the New York area? Based in New York, yeah. But I mean, the East Coast and West Coast, I like to dance around, but I'm based in New York City. And we met, I think, through Lunch Club, correct? Through Lunch Club, correct. Wonderful. So what, what stood out with uh, Rob when we met was his expertise in the proximity marketing uh, and proximity-based advertising, um, which is a niche, but it's actually quite quite large. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. I'll put my and information in the chat for everyone. Please do. Uh, and then everybody can download uh, the chat at the end. Yeah. Uh, Michelle. Welcome. I think this is your first meeting, right? Yes, it is. And I'm actually friends with Nedra. Nedra, I think I've known you long enough to call you a friend now. Um, so thank you for introducing me to this group. And I loved your presentation. I learned so much from Nedra all the time, uh, even though I'm obviously a marketer too. Um, my focus is B2B tech and manufacturing and industrial. One of my favorite clients sells sewage pumps. So we love those types of, you know, earthy companies, usually in the 30 million to 150 million range. So on the smaller end, our program is part fractional CML. So all the strategy and research and planning, but our sweet spot is in the training. So for some clients, they don't want to outsource or they have staff that are junior marketers that they love. I come in and train them and upskill them so that they don't outsource as much. And we bring all of those skills in-house. So it's the strategy plus coaching them through everything. So that's kind of unique for us, for sure. Um, definitely a nice alternative to outsourcing marketing. Um, and then if anybody knows EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, we work with a ton of EOS clients. We do a lot of work with the EOS implementers as well. And then just as a personal note, I'm over in Seattle. So I spend most of my time looking for flights to Hawaii just for kicks and pricing those out. I'm a huge marketing nerd, tech nerd. I started with digital marketing. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, but to get away from the computer, I do do dog photography of all things. Oh, yeah, wow. Rochelle, you need some dog pictures? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to send us a link to your best dog pictures. I'm like a dog lunatic. I have three Shih Tzus. I can't even tell you. As a matter of fact, that stupid ASPCA commercial has cost me thousands. Oh, so I'm a big dog uh, individual. So yes, please put your info in the chat. I'd love to yeah. connect. I'm actually super allergic to dogs, so I take their pictures and then I shower. Otherwise, I'll be sick all day. So <laughs> yes, please put your info here. That'd be great. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ken, Simon, then Jason. Ken, you're up. Hi there. I'm Ken Simon, uh, KBS Marketing. I work with small and mid-sized companies, helping them understand who their customers are, what their needs are, and then helping them reach their goals and helping them grow their business. Usually co companies come to me and says, my marketing is not working and we don't know why. And so then I try to figure out why it's not working and then develop strategies for them to get it to work. The type of companies I work with are startups, uh, small and mid-sized companies, B2B, 
in the financial services, insure tech, uh, fintech space, as well as technology companies and uh, service oriented companies. Uh, company, I'm trying to, you know, with the small, with the startups, I usually wait, you know, I won't work with a company unless it's like a, at least has a, uh, in their a round. Uh, and uh, usually I try to work with companies that ha or have revenue of, of at least $2 million and above. And uh, just seems like lately all my company, all the companies, I'm located in the New Jersey area, New York metro area, but uh, it seems like all my customers right now are in California. So can't figure that out. I'm trying to try to figure tech. out. Yeah, I can't figure out the time zones. That's driving me crazy. But anyway, that's it. Any uh, particular clients that you want to uh, share some info on? Uh, right now I'm working with a, an insurance broker that's in the insure tech space, brand new company, about three or four years old. Uh, and I'm developing growth marketing strategies for them to create awareness for them in the marketplace. I worked with a, uh, a, a security company also in the cyber tech uh, security space, um, helping them raise, uh, helping them identify prospects for them to, to try their beta program. Uh, and uh, I'm working with a company in England uh helping them with uh a whole slew of different marketing things you know anyway there there, there goes the whatever the ring the ring thank you yeah and and also uh, i don't know if you're still working with your your rocket ship company oh, that, that, uh, that i i sort of like uh no i'm not it no. <laughs> crashed it blew up it that launched blew it blew up. Up. They, they sort of like crash landed i think i'm not sure i couldn't handle All australia right. uh jason and sarita Jason, you're right. I didn't know I was next. Okay, cool. Um, so Jason Cement, I'm out in Los Angeles. I've been running an agency since 2005 called Get Visible. We do all digital, build websites, WordPress, e-commerce, and then do the traffic and the rankings and the social media and the content development, all that kind of stuff. But what makes this group more interesting, since there are so many people here to, that do what I do, and we all do it amazing, of course, uh, is I own a, I have an investment in an e-commerce platform and I put it in the comments. It's called Adricom. I didn't create the name, but it stands for the American Dream Company. And it's sort of a Lego-like system that enables us to rapidly build out a platform for almost any business need that has a website like facing functionality. And Michael and I are, are, are hopefully working on a pitching project that they may end up spending 150 grand. And if they had to use another platform, it would take probably twice as long and cost twice as much. So, uh, and Michael is the expert in the Reddit evaluating system. So he really understands a lot of what's under the hood there. So in, if someone comes to you and says, hey, I've got this idea for a, a startup or a new technology that has a web transactionality component, I don't just mean e-commerce, it could be data trans, uh, uh, collection or things like that. Uh, it's worth talking to the Adricom team because you can make a lot of money uh, providing a better support platform in faster time. So that's it. Thank you. Um, and yes, also a, a, a very talented marketing team that's in LA and Phoenix. Arizona. Phoenix, Phoenix yes. Absolutely. Cheaper real estate. Yeah. My, my partner got married and started having kids because I'm moving near the in-laws. And I'm buying a house for 20 cents on the LA dollar. So yeah, everyone here hard, to, hard to, right. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. Sarita. Okay. Hello everyone. I'm Sarita Jackson with the Global Research Institute of International Trade following Jason. We're both in Cali, LA. Thanks again, Jason, for your help with bringing my website into ADA compliance. I have to give you that shout out. And then Scott just jumped off, but I look forward to partnering with him and on a project. And so this is what, to give you a sense of what I do, that basically that I work with uh, small mid-sized companies to help them to, especially those companies that understand the importance of research before expanding to the global market, but they don't necessarily have the time to do it or have access to the types of resources that I have. So they come to me basically to save time, energy, and money so that they can expand to the global market, reach customers, clients in the overseas market, 
and grow their revenue and profits in the overseas market. And one of the area, well, just in terms of industries, a lot of my clients are in the food manufacturing space. And one of the things, someone had mentioned training, one of the things that I've started doing this year to answer the one question that I continue to get from companies that are looking to export to or from the United States is, okay, can you connect me with buyers, agents, distributors? I am a research firm. However, now I am having monthly sessions where I am connecting these producers, these manufacturers of products, <clears throat> bringing them together. And on May 26th, I will be having a, there is a gentleman who used to work with the Department of Commerce, who knows the ins and outs of finding buyers, agents, and distributors, and can help, help with answering that question for many of the clients. As a, and yeah, because they're not really trying to get the full on research, but they just need that connection. So that's one of the areas um, the training and connections. So I'm starting to have these group sessions. So May 26, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> I heard it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, so I imagine that the, uh, we know that the war in uh, Ukraine is disrupting the entire the global food market, particularly for uh, core grains and things like that. I, I right. don't know if that affects your, uh, your, your business, but um, maybe, uh, maybe um, opportunities, but people yeah, scrambling uh, to get yeah, and identifying other markets, right? Trying to find other sources of supplies. I mean, that, yeah. Anytime there's any kind of uh, challenge or any kind of catastrophe, then yeah, it opens up more opportunities for grit. Absolutely. People trying to find a, other markets. Okay, uh, let's see. Rajiv, and then I will go unless I missed somebody. Rajiv, you're up. Okay, so I'm gonna try sharing my screen uh, I want to like preview a video that we made uh, for the pitch competition that we got shortlisted for. So let me see if this works. Okay, let's see. I'll get to share the sound as well. Yeah. And share sound. Okay. And. Hi, I'm Lynn Donaldson, CEO of Connect Tech Strategic Solutions Group. We are product launch enablers for the pharma and medical devices companies and have been for the last 10 years. We partner with life science launch teams to go to market more effectively, driven by our three framework pillars of people, product and process. Working with clients including Fortune 500 companies, we noticed them struggling with unwieldy Excel sheets to capture their launch strategy and detailed implementation plans which needed to be translated for leadership. This is time consuming, resulting in launchers going over budget by thousands of dollars. A solution was needed. My good friend Rajiv was the perfect strategic partner given his e-commerce product development background. And together we created Lily Launch Tools. Rather than losing hours each week because your Excel sheets or software is failing you, use Lily Launch Tools, which is easy to use in order to affect highly successful pharma and devices launches. Welcome to Lily Launch Tools, the first strategic pharma product launch planning software of its kind designed to completely uncomplicate the process of developing and capturing your launch plan. Lily Launch Tools is built for global corporations, large or small, and allows for seamless collaboration across functional teams and time zones with real-time reporting and metrics tracking available on a user-friendly dashboard your launch teams and stakeholders will have all the information they need to manage their launch activity. Could you use an expert set of hands to guide you because your product launch is too important to fail? Lily Launch Tools helps save time, ultimately saving you thousands of dollars. I'm Lynn Donaldson, CEO of Connect Tech Strategic Solutions Group. We know how critical the success of your product launch is to you, your team, your company, and to your patients. Yeah, so my ask is basically for people that are involved with project management. Hello, Discover Card here to explain our cashback Oops. match. We match all of the cashback you earn at the end of your first year automatically. <laughs> it's that simple. Is that you or is that somebody else? Common sense. Oh my God, I had no idea. Okay, I guess this is what YouTube does, right? Okay, anyway. Oh, that was the next YouTube, right? Okay. 
I guess, I guess, sorry about that. That was not part of that, I'm not promoting Discover. Uh, yeah, so my ask is for uh, people that are connected to pharma, uh, specifically product launch in pharma or medical devices. So introductions there would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that's, I guess, the more specific ask and the larger ask is if anyone knows people involved in project management specifically. So introductions there would be awesome. There are, you know, there are a few people on, in the group that are uh, involved in pharma. Oh, really? Um, cool. Yeah. Um, look under the industry uh, and then get, you know, reach out to me. Okay. Um, but there are a few people who might, um, might be good connections. All right. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Um, then I will go. Um, Michael Bendit, my company is called Software Development Resources. Um, you know, in addition to running this network, um, which currently doesn't generate any revenue, um, I uh, have a business where I represent software development teams. Uh, so what does that mean? I do sales for them, but most of what my value is, is matching the team to the client and the client to the right team. Now, if you go, if a client, somebody who's looking for a software developer or a software development team goes directly to a software development group, uh, that team is likely to say, yeah, we can do that, uh, even if they don't really have any experience doing that. So my role um, is to make sure that it's a good match um, because you know I want my reputation to uh, stay intact and I want um, uh, repeat business. So the teams that I represent, about a dozen, uh, they've got a broad range of skills. Um, across you know, web development, e-commerce sites, mobile development, some specialty areas like 3D rendering, um, you know, uh, and blockchain is another area that I have a specialty, one of my teams has a specialty in. Um, but the bread and butter is you know, basic websites and mobile applications, e-commerce. Um, and Jason had mentioned uh, the Adricom uh, client that we're potentially working with. Uh, they've got a complex back-end uh, requirement for jewelry manufacturing. They sell everything. All of their jewelry is sold online. They're probably about a maybe a $20 million company, um, and it's sort of manufactured to order. So we're building them a system, or we're pitching a system based on the Adricom Foundation, which will uh, save them a lot of money uh, in terms of development costs. Um, so my ask is I'd love to meet uh, digital marketing agencies that don't always have the resources in-house or sometimes run out of available resources or bandwidth um, among their programmers, or they come across opportunities for which they don't have the specific skill set, right? Maybe they're, they're really good at WordPress, but a Shopify opportunity comes their way. So we love to partner with those teams. We focus on the technical side and let them take the lead on the strategy design, SEO, SEM, all of the things that are more marketing oriented and, and perhaps less sort of, you know, building an engine kind of uh, work that uh, requires you to get your hands dirty in the code. Um, so my teams love getting their hands dirty uh, in that code. That's what they focus on. Um, okay, we are down to the last minute. Uh, let's go to the gallery mode. Any comments, questions about the group? Oh, by the way, um, there will be a um, uh, a seminar, a webinar tomorrow. Uh, I know it didn't go out. That's going to be, uh, it's in conjunction with uh, Serial Marketers. Uh, it will be at 5 p.m. I'm going to put out an invite uh, to the group um, uh, to explain what that's all about. Uh, it is sort of a late, a late stage uh, announcement um, or a late announcement, but uh, better late than never. Um, so we are at least... Uh, on track for the third Wednesday um, yeah, with our webinar series with Serial Marketers. So thank you all, Rob and our other guest left, I guess so. Uh, if you're interested, uh, get in touch with me. And uh, now would be a good time to download the chat or save the chat. If you go to the chat, you click on, um, you click on the three dots, the first option is save chat, and that will send uh, download into chat to your uh, downloads 
it'll it'll download a um, a text file. So thank, thank you all. Everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you again, Nedra, for your presentation. Um, and I will uh, I will send the the results of the um, the poll if uh, folks figure, uh, finish that up uh, to to Nedra. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. one. Thanks, Michael. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Take care. Good meeting, everybody.